Hey troops, Roxy here and welcome to Roxy Plays Games. Well, I have returned to do another video and I wasn't actually originally planning on doing this, but after my first video that I put up, which was quite a long one, long-winded, but hopefully it got some of the information across that I wanted to, but after doing that one I actually had more people watch it than I ever thought would ever happen. As I have, well, prior to that, I had like two or three followers, which is just basically people that are in my community that I did a private video for, for them to go and watch on uh, the 737 Startup Procedures. Um, I had quite a few people watch the video, a few people giving me some likes, a couple of people subscribed, so thank you very much for those guys. I had a few comments, I uh, even had a comment about the music, which I really appreciate, because obviously I'm no, I'm no YouTuber, I don't pretend to be a YouTuber, and I've got no intention of being a massive YouTuber, I literally just want to stick some content out there to help some guys, and if anyone else that you know isn't part of the community watches it and gets some help, then that's even better. Uh, and also... I'm going to be putting up some videos from my own personal kind of diary, so to speak, of me playing some games. Some of them I'll be talking in, in some of them I won't be talking in. Um, and they're not really, I don't want to sound horrible when I say this, this isn't for everyone else's entertainment. It's more a case of I like to record the games that I'm playing because I enjoy them. And rather than storing them on my hard drive, which is obviously going to take up space, I want to stick them up on YouTube. Now, obviously, yes, I could stick them as unlisted so people can't see them, but hey, you know what I mean? Someone, someone might enjoy them so i'm just going to keep them as public anyway so because of the amount of people that have watched it and a couple of people in the community said that they really enjoyed it and you know how do you do this and how do you do that i thought you know so i'm going to actually do a, a bunch of videos on different aspects of this game but kind of shorter ones so like 15 20 you know no longer than 30 minutes uh, so the things i want to go through is and this is going to be the first one i'm doing now how to make money obviously that's the most important part of this because if you're not making any money but you've then got planes and pilots and bases you're going to be losing money and you need to make money to be able to con to sustain your business so that's going to be the most important video so i'm going to do that one now i'm also going to do things like how to uh, start your virtual airline things like the factories and how you do all the production of that and also the type rating so for you to be able to fly planes rather than your ai so the, I'm going to probably do this one first, then I'll do the type rate in second, because that's going to be the, probably the second most important thing if you want to fly within this. And then the other two, um, I'll probably do the virtual airline in the third, and then the other one is kind of down the line, because that's something that you won't be doing straight away, because you won't have the facility and the money to be able to kind of sustain that straight away. Anyway, let's get into this one here. So we're going to talk about how to make money now if you haven't watched my previous video on getting set up and started and importing planes and purchasing planes and what's the other one i'm thinking of brain work for me please pilots yeah hiring pilots if you haven't watched that one i would recommend going into that i'll go into a little bit more detail i'm going to very briefly fly through it now for those of you that haven't watched it and don't want to watch an hour or so of me talking about everything about getting set up so i'm going to quickly go through that now the first thing that you will need to do is you'll need to go up to management aircraft management and when you first start the game all that will be here is aircraft that are stock x-plane aeroplanes if you have any planes that you've purchased purchased from let's say from the um org store or from just flight they'll be in your x-plane library but they won't be in the air hall hauler 2 library as an example the do 228 dornier okay that is in my x-plane library but wasn't in here all you need to do is really simple if you go to import aircraft it takes a few seconds for it to search for your x-plane library and then produce a list of all the planes that's in within that library now if you've got them stored in different places you may have to manually search for them but all the planes will be here so let's say for example we've got the default Be Beechcraft Baron but I want to load in the Beechcraft Baron 58 with the G1000 all you do is click on this click import it'll say it's imported successfully it will have all of this populated now sometimes there's a couple of planes that I've 
uh, uploaded into here and certain bits of information have been miss missing like the manufacturer or the cruise speed or something like that there's a bit of a bummer if that happens because what you're going to then have to do is go and search for that information and try and get that as accurate as you can you can't put in something completely random like let's say i put in 50 passengers you click on that it's going to say this aircraft is unrealistic number for passengers for its weight okay so you can't put in something really random when this first came out for fsx people was doing that and obviously the developers caught onto it and then they've put parameters for the particular plane and weight and stuff like that uh, but once you've got all that information filled out if there is anything blank you just click on ok so that's doing it that way the other way of doing it if you've got them stored somewhere else is click on import aircraft again wait for it to load up and one thing one plane i am missing is the concord right so i don't even know if it's showing in here it's quite possible oh there it is right so it is showing there but let's say it, it wasn't click on browse find your aircraft folder wherever you've you've saved it so mine is here and then find the plane that you want to load in click on concord open it up and you're looking for the acf file okay dot acf you just click on that click open and then you can import it right i'm not going to do that now because obviously i've already got it in there once you've got your plane installed you need to purchase the plane that you want to fly or you want your pilots to fly so what you want to then do you want to go to marketplace aircraft and this, this is all the aircraft that you can purchase this isn't all of the aircraft that is in your x-plane folder this is all the aircraft that has been loaded into air hauler 2 so before you purchase your plane you want to make sure that you can have if you're not flying it yourself you need to have ai flying it for you you need to make sure you've got crew that can fly it so as an example if i wanted to purchase a concord um where's it gone concord why are you not showing in here do 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 right obviously i didn't load it in all the way through i'm sure i did management aircraft management oh i didn't oh i didn't load it in <laughs> donut there we go all right so let's say the grand caravan for me to have ai pilot flying a grand, Car grand caravan i need to make sure that i've got a pilot with the c208 license so you need to go to crew what i generally do is i sort them out in monthly salary salary and then starting from the top I'll just look down this left hand column, type rate held, and I'm looking for 208. Nope, nope, uh, nope, uh, nope, uh, nope. Oh, see, so this is actually really good. This is a good example because if I had to purchase that plane for AI to fly, and then, oh, there is one, I must have. I didn't have it all the way up to the top right so sometimes you'll get a a list of pilots available to hire and they won't have any of them won't have that particular license another one to think about is if you're buying a jet as a 737 as an example you will need a minimum of two pilots possibly three or four and you might even need two crews if you're doing a really long distance so you're going to need three four five six possibly eight pilots with that particular license which obviously going to be really expensive so once you have made sure you've got the pilot that can obviously fly it you hire that pilot you go back to the aircraft you purchase that pilot whether you actually buy it outright or you lease it and that's you good to go obviously i've already done that uh, for those of you that seen the last video you will know that and if i go to company information click on pilots i've got two pilots or three pilots sorry i've got bart simpson and zachary bird uh, they are my 738 pilots and what you can do is I mean I've got Bart as my main guy so if I click on Zachary here and I right click and set description I can just put in the B738 just so that um, I know just by looking at this that he is my 738 pilot and Owen is my 310 pilot so I can put in uh, my C310 and obviously I could change the name if you didn't already know that so if I wanted to call this guy um, Amarge Simpson as an example uh, Simpson not that I'm a uh, 
Not that I am a follower of The Simpsons. <laughs> Maybe I am. Uh, let's call him Homer, shall we? Simpson. Cool. Oh, wrong one. Did it in the description. B738. So if anyone here that is watching this video would like to be one of my AI pilots, have your name in here, or fictitious, fictitious name if you want to be um, in here, then stick a comment below and I'll add you, providing I've obviously got the planes. Right, so we've got our three pilots. We know what planes that they can fly. Uh, we've obviously already had a look at our aircraft that is available or our fleet, sorry, which is the 738 and the 310. Right, so this is now how to make money. Sorry, it's a little bit long-winded, but for those of you that haven't watched the first one, I kind of wanted to make sure you go through the, the main parts. Importing your planes, purchasing your planes, and hiring your pilots. The next thing we can do now is start creating some jobs for them. So we've got two types of jobs, essentially. If we go to cargo jobs and passenger routes, the first one is available jobs. This is cargo jobs. All of these are cargo jobs. And if we click on routes, this is all passenger routes that we manually create for our AI. So let's start off with the uh, available jobs first. What I like to do is I like to click on quantity and sort them in order because I know that my, if I go to back to fleets, my 310 has got a maximum cargo capacity. This is including fuel and passengers, uh, pilots, and if you do have any passengers, of 1,031 maximum. Um, I believe from what the developers have said that you can add on around about 10%. But I don't know whether that's for you flying it or whether AI will take that or whether they will only go to the maximum and then they'll leave the rest and come back for it. Either way, we want to try and be under this. But when you go to available cargo jobs and actually get a job, it will show less than that because it's that's including the fuel. Right, so we want something under a thousand and I'll show you now what I mean. If I was to go to closing, this one's 919 pounds. If I then, this is how you do it. You click on assign to AI. Or you can click on accept job, load it yourself, but this is the quickest way of doing it. Assign to AI, click yes. It will then show you your plane. Now you can see here the cargo capacity is actually only 700 because it's got fuel on board as well. And obviously the pilot's um, weight. I don't know what if that's actually in, included in it, but I'm guessing it probably is. So we actually want a cargo capacity of less than 700. Otherwise, it will take 700, go there, come back, and pick up the rest. So it's obviously going to be delayed. So let's can, cancel. Let's cancel that one. That's a new word I've just thought of. And we are going to look at these ones above here. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the distance, and I'm looking at the cost or the price uh, that we're going to get paid. They're very close, but the distance is almost twice um, from that one to that one. So theoretically, the cost per mileage, this one's going to be the better choice. So we're going to go for that one. We're going to assign to AI. We're going to say yes. We're going to assign that to Marge, and we're going to click OK. And that's her accepted. We can click on Accept Jobs. And we can see here, when we click on this one, we're going to get paid 3260 once it's all been delivered, which it will be done in one route. And in the little box down here, it just gives you a little bit more information and who it's assigned to. So that is how you create jobs for cargo. Now, you can create multiple jobs for those of you that are curious about this. If you click on Available Jobs again and find something else, so let's have a look at, say, this one here. We can assign to um, AI, click yes, give this one to Marge, and that's done. So now we go to accepted jobs. What Marge will do, she will do this first one, because this is the first one we created for her. And then once she's done that one, she'll come back to here, LFRH, pick up these machinery parts and take them to EGNX. So without us actually realizing, what we're actually doing is we're leaving EGNX, going to EGHQ, and then flying from EGHQ to LH, LFRH, 
picking up the machine parts and then taking them back to EGNX. So we're doing kind of a round trip, so to speak. Two jobs created. We're going to bring in a little over six thousand uh, pounds. I haven't sat here and worked out what the costs are going to be for fuel, etc. But we'll see that once it's all completed. Right. So that's the first part. The next one we're going to do is create some passenger routes. So the way we do this is we click on Add Sector. Now, when you're doing this, you obviously need to have a plane that's configured for passengers and this can be anything from a C172 all the way up to you know your big jets and you can only start from where the plane is you can't just start it from a random place you can take it to a random place but you can't start from a random place it has to be where that particular plane is so we are going to start from EGNX and for those of you that watched my previous video, you will see that I was um, going back up and north, up and north, up and down. Um, oh my lord, I can't even speak. I'm just going to stop there and I'm going to say, let's go for Glasgow as an example. Uh, if I can sp spell it correctly, Glasgow, Glasgow. Uh, so EGPF. You selected, and we are going to create some routes so we're going to this is the best way to do it you can start it obviously i can look in here so it's the 29th um friday the 29th 10 15 in the morning so i can start it you know in an hour's time but what i what i've been told by the developers is uh, and i don't know if it is 100 percent of the time or majority of the time or or what but basically it will do the first flight and then it will pause for 24 to 48 hours and then it will continue when you do it back to front. The best way, and this is what they, the develop, developer has said, the best way to do it is start it from the Monday, start it whatever time you want to do your first flight. So let's say we want to do our first flight at, say, let's go for 8 a.m. You then want to set how much you're going to charge. So let's say we're going to charge for premium economy, we're going to charge 400, and then economy, we're going to charge 195. So that's the price of the tickets. This is our expenses that we can see here. And this is the maximum amount of income we're going to get if we fill our seats. Now, what you can do is you can do a little bit of testing and fly this route yourself. See what the best prices are and then remember that and then input it into here. But if you just want to get going, this is the way to do it. Set your prices. Check to make sure that your income is more than your expenditure which we can clearly see it is and then you click add sector that's the first route done we then want to do a return route so we're going to click schedule return sector with that this will automatically work out a time from when it lands so 902 30 minute turnaround it will then go to the next time slot you can change this if you want to to a later time you can't go earlier but you can go later so let's say we want to go for uh, 10 a.m it's saved this you can do different prices again if you want to or you can leave it as it is add sector so that's a return route now the pilots if you've only got two pilots the maximum time you can fly is eight hours for the two of them in in one crew they will then require a 16 hour rest and that is from the time of departure until the the time so the the latest we can fl we can fly to is going to be four o'clock in the afternoon so we can as you can see at the moment it's going to be 11 a.m so let's do a returns sector uh, we'll leave it as it is and then let's do another return sector and let's depart at say two o'clock at sector so as you can see the first departure time is going to be 8 a.m the last arrival time is going to be 3 p.m so that is going to be uh, within our time slot so let's click assign cruise we only as I, as i said we only require one crew for this let's click ok the captain is going to be homer simpson the first officer is going to be Bart Simpson. Let's click save. And that is our first flight created. So this will continue to run in our calendar. If we have a look at a craft schedule, we look at our calendar for the week. So this is the month, what's happening on the Monday. 
to flights that happen on the Monday. And that's it. Every Monday this will happen unless you delete it. So what we want to do now is we want to have this running every day of the week, don't we? You don't have to repeat this process for every day. This is a really, really neat fe feature that they've put in and it saves so much time. Just right click on any of these, copy day to other days, select the days of the week that you want to have that flight running. I'm going to have it running every day. Click OK. Assign crew, because it's going to be the same crew flying it. Click save. And that is my whole weekly schedule done. That's it. They will actually start today. They will start flying today, providing, depending on the time. Uh, actually, let's have a look. The time is 10.20. Uh, they might do these two. If not, they're definitely going to do the rest of them because we started the schedule from the Monday rather than starting the schedule from today. Because if we had to start the schedule from today, it would have done the first flight, it would have skipped 24 to 48 hours and then it would have kicked in. Whereas if you start the schedule from the Monday, it will start from, uh, if not that flight depending on the time, it will definitely start the next day. And that's it. Brilliant. We have created our jobs. And that is all you need to do, guys. Available jobs for your cargo, create your routes for your passengers. And any, oh, sorry, one thing. Any of these routes, if you want to fly it yourself, you can do it. And you can do, you can do all these back to back ahead of time, but you won't get paid until that particular flight should have been done. Okay. But that's it, guys. That is how you create money using your AI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it there. It's been around about 20 minutes or so. That's kind of the length of time that I want to keep it to. My next video is I'm going to show you how you do a type rating on a plane so that you can fly that plane yourself and then show you how you then do a job yourself. Really, really simple. So then you can have your AI running in the background, earning you money every day. It does mean that you have to keep going into available jobs and creating your cargo jobs you can do two or three four you could do loads of them in you know back to back or creating them for your thing but obviously they're going to run out at some point so then you're going to need to come in here click refresh just to make sure that it is the latest ones and as you go to different airports more jobs will appear uh, and obviously this will just keep running daily until you delete them off so that is the background money what i would advise is on the particular day that it's done a flight so let's say it does this flight today at 11:45. then what you can do is you can click on this and it will actually show you the percentage that it has done and the average income for that one and that's it um, if it's if you're getting a really poor income from it then reduce your prices if you're getting a really good one and it's a hundred percent then increase your prices until you get to the point where it starts dropping so it might need a little bit of playing around um, hence why I said if you do an ad hoc flight which I'm going to show in the next video you can actually see how much you make by playing around with the ticket prices and then you can then apply that to these flights anyway thanks for watching guys if you haven't already subscribed drop us a subscribe to get notified when I do more videos and if you like the video give us a thumbs up thank you very much for watching and this is Roxy out